Hello, everyone. Very happy to be here with you this afternoon. Hello from Alpha Jangada. Okay, glad to see you too. Um, hello there. Yeah. Well, can you please type um, in the chat where you are from? Oh, so nice to see so many of you here. This is really a new experience. Oh, we have someone from Montevideo. Okay, very, very nice to see that through technology we can reach so many people and so many people can reach us. Oh, he's Sifi, uh-huh. Porto Alegre. Okay, oh, Marista Ponta Grossa, very nice. Minas Gerais, wow, Uruguay, uh -huh. all right, well, we. I hope we'll have an enjoyable hour or maybe a little more than an hour together to discuss 360 degree thinking and 180 degree turn or turn around. Um, this event um, is, of course, sponsored by Dizal. Um, I am very thankful. My I have a very long relationship with Dizal, and I'm very thankful to everyone there. Uh, this, this is a very nice moment also to be with uh, the people at Dizal. Um, we have, as I said, a very long um relationship a very long history together um now um i i can only thank Dizal for the trust and for the opportunity to meet so many people and maybe make new acquaintances new friendships um this idea of 360 thinking and 180 degree uh turnaround uh, has been fascinating me for some time and uh, the idea of change i don't think we have to emphasize anymore um, change is knocking on our door all the all the time every day especially now with this pandemic um, now a few instructions uh, so if you oh dominican republic thank you thank you for being with us um other um, more people from Minas Gerais all right so you can you can write questions and comments in the chat in the chat area and then everything that you type with a question mark will uh be taken into consideration for um maybe a discussion maybe not an answer I don't know if I can answer many of the things that um, you may ask but I'll certainly try. Um, so you probably read about uh, what we're going to talk uh, ab about, and um, uh, you probably uh, read a little bit about my bio data, and um, I've been involved with both teaching. I'm essentially a teacher. I was born a teacher when I was 16 years old. There were not many good people around, so they would hire anyone um, and uh, I'm not 16 anymore as you can see and uh, I've been involved with uh, teaching teacher training um, and also management school management uh, so I've I've been I've, I've been wearing several hats um, so that's why I've I've I'm involved with um i'm still involved with the classroom at the university and uh, but i'm also involved with management and i think um we're managing all the time we're managing inside the classroom and we're managing our lives outside the classroom um so um the first thing i would like to uh probably uh, clarify for all of us is the purpose of this talk with you um, 
what we do is usually based on what we think so why not borrow a few smart thoughts from others and i'm not talking about myself i'm talking about all the people i've borrowed um, thoughts from um, and you will see some of them here um, so everything i'm going to propose here has this purpose of food for thought i don't think that nowadays we can do much more than that um, I, I i think what we have to do as you will see um uh, based on comments i'm going to make we have to be creative and connect the dots. So um, this is my purpose. I hope this is something that uh, will meet your expectations. Let's look at this. Um, what you see is, of course, uh, a butterfly. Uh, I see a question there about a certificate. Yes, this out will um, uh, issue a certificate in a few days, and you will receive it. Uh, by email. Um, now, I would like uh, to make this a little bit interactive. So, um, can you answer this question? What connection do you think there is between a butterfly and change? Of course, I'm giving you only three options. Choose the one that you think probably is closer to your expectations in terms of um, connection between a butterfly and change. I'll give you a few more seconds to answer that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that beauty is also, um, I mean, it's got 24% and uncertainty 22%. So, so uncertainty is not all that bad. Certainly, tranquility is not an option here for most of you. Okay. Uh, from what I can see... Um, people see beauty uh, as a possible connection between a butterfly and change because of course change in that case um, has a very uh, interesting result in terms of aesthetics in terms of uh, of appearance so uh, beauty seems to be winning okay that gives me um, yeah there is beauty in change definitely okay I'm going to end the voting here and I'm going to propose another um, moment of interaction. So, as you can see, beauty um, is the winner here. All right. Now, oops, uh, we have the butterfly here. Now, look at this. And again, let's um, have a survey. What connection can you see between the elephant in the picture and change? We have three options again. There are never small changes in life. Changes always bring along nasty consequences. Noticing change may take some time. Mm hmm so what we have here as already a majority is that noticing change may take some time mm -hmm. all right
All right. Okay, that gives me an idea that um, we are basically on the same page on this. So the idea is that, of course, change in this case, in the case of a butterfly, has very beautiful, maybe positive results. Uh, and in this case, um, sometimes uh, something that starts almost unnoticed for a long period um, is not a problem. But certainly an elephant in the, in the living room is a problem. And um, maybe we're, we were not noticing that that was going to be the result. Change is slow until it isn't. And uh, even more now, uh, when we don't notice change because our lives um, are at a very fast speed in every area, in every field of our lives. Um, and so we don't notice things. Well, do you also have this feeling that we seem to be more and more often at crossroads? We have to make decisions. And uh, sometimes we have multiple roads um, ahead of us. Do you have this feeling too? Yeah. Well, that seems to be the case. And that seems to be um, the norm from now on. Which leads me to this saying in English, for now we see through a glass darkly. Do you remember this? Do you, do you, do you remember where um, this comes from? Well, well uh, the whole sentence comes from this, um, from St. Paul's for, uh, first uh, epistle, to the Corinthians, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Well, this saying uh, or this sentence in English, for now we see through a, a glass darkly, means that we cannot see the whole. We cannot see the whole picture. We just have a dim outline of what's there. And in the picture I chose, we have um, maybe the person in a, in a train or in the subway, and there is this, this idea of speed. So besides um, having a glass that is not very clear, that does not let us see very well, we also have speed. So this is certainly um, uh, a problem for um, uh, when we find ourselves at crossroads. We cannot see things very clearly and we have to make very fast decisions. So what I'm going to discuss with you um, is basically um, a tool for this um, moment of um, uh, staying or near or approaching when we're approaching crossroads in life in our profession, in um, our personal lives, um, in uh, maybe everything that is related to our contemporary world nowadays. The first uh, um, smart person I, I probably borrowed some thoughts from was Peter Sange. I read this book in the 1990s, but it is so, uh, even though, uh, you know, in the, on the cover, you can see that it's revised and updated uh, with a hundred new pages. Uh, it's, it's, it's still very, very, very contemporary. Uh, it's called The Fifth Discipline, and it's about uh, the fact that every organization, and I would say even human being that um, has a plan to survive, and uh, thrive uh, probably has to be a learning organization or a learning uh, being. And the problem um, with uh, being at crossroads and uh, the, the speed at which 
um, life is uh, moving nowadays is that, um, according to what he says, is that we have been taught, our educational system has taught us to see the world in a fragmented way. And that is a problem. Of course, it seems very logical because it makes complex tasks more manageable. At least we, we think that these tasks, because we break them apart, because we see the world in, in fragments, we sometimes uh, think that we can handle things more efficiently. However, according to him, we pay an enormous hidden price because we lose our intrinsic sense of connection to a larger uh, whole. And that is more or less, I think, what we say when we um, talk about the forest and the trees. It's very important to see both. It's very important um, to see the, the forest. Yes, we have to see the whole, but we have to see the trees also. And uh, uh, this is part of what um, I mentioned in the abstract uh, of um, uh, the 360 degree uh, thinking. Um, uh, but if we look at things in a fragmented way, we have this little problem here. Uh, are you familiar with the expression in English, hail and hearty? We usually talk about old people, maybe like myself, uh, and we say that, we, we well, that's a um, hail and hearty old, uh, old man. And hail actually um, is not very much used um, separately from this collocation. Um, but hail is, in Old English, the root of uh, healthy and whole is hail. They have the same root. And it's, it's, it's interesting that um, seeing things as a whole is very healthy. And that's the food for thought, the first food for thought I would like to um, share with you. Um, therefore, when we don't uh, look at things as a whole, maybe we're not looking at the situation in a very healthy way. Because there is this mismatch between the reality, the nature of reality in complex systems, and the world is a complex system, our lives are complex systems, uh, and normally the way we think about this reality usually, usually dissociates uh, cause and effect. And the point is, uh, usually, today's problems come from yesterday's solutions. And you can probably think of many examples um, of cause and effect. And what was an e a very positive effect some time ago is now the cause of one of our problems. Um, and definitely, um, how can we solve this mismatch? The first thing we have to do is to correct this, mis this mismatch is to stop thinking or considering, according to Peter Singe, that cause and effect are necessarily close in time and space. Because, okay, this happens, um, so we have the cause, then we'll have the effect. In fact, Nowadays, it's more and more um, evident that uh, many of the important events in the world have cause at a very um, distant, uh, in a very distant past, and maybe the effect uh, we can see only now, but we don't see the cause. Um, so this is the first thing. Let's stop thinking that cause and effect happen very close in time and space. That's the suggestion for the 360 degree thinking. We are, maybe we have always been in an age of interdependence. So systems thinking, which is this 360 degree thinking, so looking at everything as a whole, shows us that there is no outside. In fact, we 
and the cause of our problems form a single system. The cure, the solution, is on is is lies in the relationship with the enemy, and the enemy is um, in quotations there because it's no enemy; it's an opportunity. Um, Peter Sange defines systems thinking as a discipline for seeing holes and a, and a framework for seeing interrelationships rather than things, or um, the idea is to see patterns of change rather than static snapshots. This is crucial uh, for what we're living in the 21st century, even maybe what we have lived in the 20th century. Um, well, maybe in other uh, or on other occasions, we will discuss uh, tools for systems thinking. Today, I would just like to, to leave you some um, comments that will probably make you think whether you are looking at your life, your profession, everything that is happening around you uh, from a whole perspective or a fragmented perspective. And that is going to make a very big difference. As a, a clear example that many people have been doing this, or some people have been doing this, I'm going to show you maybe something that you already know, um, maybe you're familiar with uh, Nikolai Kondratiev, or Kondratiev. Um, he was an economist, and uh, this is my food for thought number two. He developed what uh, nowadays is known as the Kondra Kondratiev. He didn't call it uh, when he wrote his book, but um, other researchers lay, um, uh, after him called uh, these cycles or waves the Kondratiev waves or cycles. Um, according to this theory, uh, and again, we're looking at the whole, but we're also looking at the fragments but not dissociating cause and effect in, in time. These cycles, there's, um, there's a dispute there. Some of them might, um, might um, last 50 or 60 years. Uh, he identified, looking at the past, he identified certain cycles, certain waves, and these waves, according to him, have four faces, four um, uh, periods inside each of these waves. There's a period for prosperity, a period for recession, a period for depression, and a period for improvement in the sense of expansion that will probably lead to another cycle. The beginning of the cycle of is prosperity. Um, you, I won't go deep into this, but this opened my eyes in terms of um, we can, uh, this, is, this is no spiritual advice. This is based on science um, and this is based on observation. This is based on 360 degree thinking because this can probably um, uh, make us decide what kind of 180 degree turnaround we have to have. Uh, just to give you a little bit more about these cycles, we can, uh, I think you will be able to witness many of the events here as a cycle. Uh, and maybe some of them will really call your attention. Uh, for example, the first wave that Kondratiev um, mentioned ha had to do with the steam engine and the textile industry therefore we had clothing you know a very good expansion there but then of course there was another cycle and uh, the railroad the steel we had mass transport and so on and so forth as you can see we're probably living this fifth kondratiev wave uh, it probably started around uh, 1980 and it will last between 1980 uh, to 2030. Uh, so it's, as I said, 50 years or 60 years. And then we'll, if this is true, we'll continue having other waves. 
and uh, the experts are talking about you know after we reach um 2030 um we'll probably have this kind of cycle which will involve a lot of biotechnology psychosocial health and a holistic health um, um concern interesting because holistic nowadays also has to do with this idea of looking at the whole picture um were you familiar with uh, kondratiev um, waves uh, before had you seen this um as i said we don't have to study this in depth we're not economists we maybe this is not going to um we're not going to write a paper on this we're not going to write a thesis or a dissertation but certainly this can be an eye opener uh so again just a little bit more of facts so we can see the change is slow 50 60 years until it isn't until the elephant is there until the elephant is in the room and can be a big problem um if you i'm sure you will um uh, look into this maybe google it and you will read more about it and as i said you don't have to become an expert but you can certainly see that we are in one of these waves and what are the uh, uh, probable changes that we are already witnessing uh, in this wave we are um, uh, immersed in? Well, you know that oil is uh, oil as as um, as a source of energy is coming to an end, and uh, the new oil is going to be and is already data or data now of course oil had to be refined so now analysis is the new refining and this is all from experts based on um, many uh, theories in relation to the future but uh, when we analyze or take into, into consideration these waves that we have uh, mentioned um, just briefly well in order to refine we need uh, um, fuel uh, and uh, intelligence because of the decisions we have ahead uh, is the new gasoline we need this fuel uh, in order to analyze data and you have to remember that the value of oil depended or depends on its scarcity um, however this scarcity um, is uh, not the question of data or data we have a lot of data <clears throat> the important thing now the value of um, uh, any any amount of data we can get is uh, related to its connectivity very interesting because um the the idea of connectivity how we put things together and again this idea of cause and effect can make a world of difference in when we prepare for the consequences of change and of course um uh, for for a long time uh green the idea of uh, nature being having to be preserved and having to be protected uh now privacy is the new green because data is so important um this is uh so clear when we think of fake news for example um well considering all this this is where the 180 turnaround probably starts we're looking at things from a different point of view now it's very important not to make a turnaround of 100, uh, 360 degrees, otherwise we'll end up where we started. But it's very important to analyze things um, using this 360 degrees approach, um, the idea of systems thinking. But maybe the turnaround we have to make is just of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 45 degrees, so that we don't end up where we started 
Well, let me give you some uh, facts also about this, the winds of change, and uh, therefore some of the causes um, of uh, these waves or that will uh, that have already come with some of the waves and the will come. I will not focus on each one of them. Uh, my interest here is certainly in, in um, causes that will affect or impact education and therefore our lives and probably the lives of every human being on the planet since education is so vital for, um, for this century and for the centuries to come. Uh, here in the economic aspect, I will talk, uh, I will focus or draw your attention only to the idea that uh, population aging will certainly affect research that will, that has already been um, looking at human enhancement technology. People who live longer will have an extended life cycle. Because of this, of course, uh, because of technology, in the aspect when we when we think of jobs and the workforce of course we already have a robotization and uh, this is creating uh, or this is generating the creative destruction of jobs it's creative and creative destruction seems a little bit ant antithetical but it's not because some jobs are being destroyed but others are being created the the, the only problem there is how prepared are we for these new jobs and of course, because of technology, again, uh, telecommunications and the internet of things, uh, companies are more and more geographically dispersed and we can work, uh, we can have um, um, home office work. So um, uh, this is already happening. Now, specifically in terms of um, uh, population aging and human uh, enhancement technology, uh, what the experts are telling us is that maybe not us, maybe, maybe certain, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to live to be 120 years old, but many of um, the young people today will uh, because of human uh, enhancement technology. And this means that um, according to predictions that, uh, so we're looking at causes and effects, we're looking at change that might seem very slow now, but when it comes, it won't be slow anymore. We'll have the impression we'll have is that it was that everything happened very fast. So probably people will retire only after they are 100 years old. Adolescence will probably last until you are 40 years old. Um, maternity will be safe even after you are 50 years old. Um, uh, there will probably there there's probably going to be the need for birth control uh, around the planet, and this is a touchy issue I know, and of course because people will live longer, there will be generational conflict. I'm very interested in here. Uh, all this will mean that we'll have to think of education from a very 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 unique and different perspective. Um, there will be uh, reforms in pension funds. We are, are, we are already um, um, uh, witnessing this. Um, human resources, of course, there will be cultural and political shocks. In the classroom, what um, can we uh, foresee, um, which nowadays is not a problem to foresee anymore. I think all of you have already um, witnessed or can imagine that these things will happen. Um, so this is the, I think this is not a 45 degree turnaround, not a 90 degree turnaround. It's probably going to be in some cases here, uh, an 180 degree turnaround. Um, so we started now, maybe nowadays, I mean, a few years ago, we wouldn't talk of a digital classroom. Maybe we wouldn't talk of gamification as the buzzword. Um, um, maybe we wouldn't talk about virtual reality and augmented reality, um, but we're actually moving towards hybrid intelligence. People, according to experts, will have chips 
um, installed, inserted in their brain so that they can have more information accessible very fast. And remember, we were talking about connectivity of data or data. So this is maybe where we're heading. Um, well, uh, this, as I said, was an eye opener. Um, it started with Kondratiev, it started with Peter Singe, and uh, some more smart people who also gave me more good thoughts about the 360-degree uh, thinking uh, were uh, specifically Cl Clayton Christensen, who died recently. Um, he has these three books about innovation. Uh, the Innovator's Dilemma, The Innovator's DNA, and The Innovator's Solution. Um, there's also another one, which I think is very good for us teachers or for people who work with education, which is Disrupting Class. And this disrupting class can be read in different ways. We can disrupt class, class can be disrupting, and it's a, I also recommend that book. Um, now, what is the food for thought number three in uh, these books? Um, we, uh, I mean, the, the, the reading of these books and some others brought me to the usual uh, um, maybe um, phrase uh, that marketing, uh, people involved in marketing uh, usually say, that we have to have customer centricity because change is slow until it isn't. Now, if you look at, um, uh, and when I say customer centricity, it, it's not the old idea of um, uh, the customer is always right. The point is, it's not the customer is always right. The point is the customer is always there. We're all customers. We're customers and service providers in society. We live in an age of interdependence. So the road ahead shows this customer centricity importance. Uh, but by centricity here is, uh, we mean paying attention to people. Um, and this is making some uh, companies um, be the obvious choice for customers. I would also like to talk about us teachers as companies. I mean, don't you see yourself as a company? Don't you offer a service? Uh, sometimes we only see ourselves as um, an employee, right? But we're more than that. We are service providers and we're also customers. Do we treat our customers as we would like to be treated, do we have the same kind of centricity? Of course, um, someone mentioned products there. Uh, yeah, products or service, that's what makes the world go round, right? Uh, these two. But certain, uh, certainly, um, with our service, maybe some products come along. Well, whatever, um, I mean, I'm not going to go into details um, in relation to what is service and what is a product, but you certainly have very good examples of companies that um, captured uh, this uh, truth a few years before now. For example, our vision is to be Earth's most customer-centric company to build a place where people come, can come to find and discover anything they might want to buy online. We're talking about products, yes, but we're also talking about expectations. Yeah, that's Amazon, that's it. But look at this, this is even before Amazon. We create happiness by providing the finest in entertainment for people of all ages, everywhere. Very powerful words create happiness. 
finest entertainment for people of all ages everywhere. And I guess most of you will agree that they have been successful. But, of course, change is slow until it isn't. So that's why you cannot simply think that what you have done is going to be working all the time. We have, there is this creative destruction of jobs. We have to be analyzing things from a systems thinking perspective. And maybe we'll have to make some turnarounds. Disney has been doing this. Many other companies have been doing the same thing. So, if you are a company, well, let's consider this. What is the relationship um, that you have or that you establish between uh, cust the customer experience and the customer centricity? That is uh, how the customer perceives our service and how we are uh, concerned with uh, the customer. In general, companies and people who simply meet the needs of uh, the customer, uh, they are at a very basic level of customer centricity. And so they are not the obvious choice. Uh, they may be um, simply forgotten because of price, because of service, because of any other feature that someone else uh, who um, maybe goes up in this pyramid um will offer we have an easy customer experience and we are would be at an intermediate level uh if you um as i said we would be at an intermediate level of a customer centricity if uh, the relationship is easy right um uh, people don't get uh, frustrated or angry with the service or product that we provide but the advanced level of customer centricity is when the relationship is enjoyable. And it's interesting that, for example, with, with Disney, they mention uh, the finest entertainment and happiness. Isn't that what um, all of us want, after all? Yeah. Now, look at this. There's a little formula that I uh, came across uh, some time ago. Of course, for us to survive uh, uh, in these waves of change, we have to be proactive. We have to look at the market. We have to, to be, um, uh, that there must be market proactivity as a teacher, as a school, as a company. And I think all the schools are looking at this maybe having a very hard lesson at this moment. For us to have pro, uh, market proactivity, we need a few elements. We need a proactive, we need proactive strategies, certainly. We can go into details about strategies in relation to teaching and teachers, maybe on another occasion, another uh, talk, online talk. Proactive marketing, Yes, um, it's, it's high time all of us teachers um, knew a little bit more, more about marketing and how we should place ourselves uh, in the market. And there must be proactive innovation, which does not always have to be disruptive. Many times it's incremental, but even if it's incremental, it has to do, uh, it has to be connected to um, our customers' expectations and needs what are their pains so that we can go there and alleviate the pains. But look, it's very important that here there is the plus sign. So we add these things, but we multiply by people, by proactive people. All this, if added, will not have the same effect if not multiplied by proactive people. What is the wow factor that you have, that you create, that you generate? What is a wow factor, the enjoyable factor 
of your service, the service of your school. With systems thinking, with um, analysis of data, we can come to think of wow factors all the time. Not only one wow factor this year, and maybe this is going to last forever. I would like to make a pause and give you uh, the opportunity to maybe you already you have already seen this. Um, let's hope it all works. The future of education can't be found in a gadget or an app or a program or a product. It doesn't require a think tank full of pundits. No, the future of education can be found in your classroom. Your classroom is packed with creative potential. You have all the innovation you need right there in your room. And you have the power to make it happen. It's what happens when you experiment. It's what happens when you give your students voice and choice. It's what happens when you abandon the scripted curriculum and take your students off road in their learning. It's what happens when you teach to your students rather than teaching to the test. It's what happens when you unleash the creative power of all of your students when you make the bold decision to let them make things and design things and solve problems that they find relevant. Sometimes it's messy and even confusing. It often looks humble. But understand this, that every time your students get the chance to be authors or filmmakers or scientists or artists or engineers, you are planting the seeds for a future that you could never have imagined on your own. That's the power of innovative teachers. That is why the future of education is you. I hope uh, that this motivates you at this um, you know, very difficult time we're all living. But if we don't believe that the future of education is each one of us, then education will have no future. Um, we seem to come back to a slide that I've already used. Crossroads again? Well, that's life. And uh, when we uh, maybe reach crossroads, I always like to remember, I, I teach um, British and Amer English and American literature at the university. Um, as I said, I wear several hats a and I like to, um, when I have to face um, the crossroads that uh, happen to uh, simply uh, uh, spring up in front of me, I like to remember the um, verses at the end of uh, this poem by Robert Frost. There will always be very, very, very many roads ahead, ahead of us. This is from the poem um, um, by Robert Frost, as I said. Um, and the, the, the last verses are, last lines, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. So are we going to keep looking at what everyone has been doing or are we going to travel the last, are we going to take the less traveled road? Traveling the, le I mean, uh, taking or choosing the less traveled uh, road um, implies 360 thinking implies many times making a 180 degree turn, turn around. And uh, we're exactly at the right moment in time, probably with all the uh, difficult situations every human being on the planet is facing. So what I wanted to give you here was food for thought, not to solve all of your problems, because I, I can solve many of my own problems. Um, the problem is not solving many times. The problem, the problem is managing. And we can manage when we have an idea of the whole and the parts.
and all, not only the fragmented um, uh, pieces that uh, we think compose our lives. And we come back to another slide with a slight um, different touch here. All of us have good ideas, but you know, good ideas without action usually become regrets. I would like to end this with a quote by someone you probably know very well, at least in terms of um, the news and, and some things you might have read. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you will know when you find it. And this is someone who knew about jobs, Steve. So this is last but not least food for thought. This talk is dedicated to the courageous souls who do the work that matters. We're teachers and who do the work to matter, to be, to be important, not to be famous, but to be important and to leave a legacy. Time is the only thing that we really have, but we have no control over. Remember, change is slow until it isn't. Good ideas are only regrets if no action is taken. Thank you for your very, very precious time. So um, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you have um, found some things to think about and maybe uh, look at um, systems thinking. Oh, thank you very much. Um, let's see uh, if we have any, uh, maybe uh, the people from Dizal can help me there. Uh, do we have any questions? Let me see if we have any questions. It seems we have three. Um, Q and A, public. Thank you, thank you. Um, I hope I hope you can read the books, share share these food uh, th these pieces of food for thought with other people. Um, there are more messages. <laughs> thank you. Um, I don't know, Mr. Rice, would you recommend any specific ideas for a private teacher like me uh, who mostly teaches on one? Oh, um, uh, maybe uh, um, I'll, I'll leave my, uh, I'll type my, e um, my, okay, would you recommend? Uh, I think um, we wouldn't have the time um, uh, to discuss this here but um, I, I can certainly uh, leave my email here and we can share ideas, maybe start a very good relationship and um, we'll have uh, good um, moments to discuss things uh, in relation to our profession. Where can we find you? How can we follow your work? Well, actually, uh, no, I don't have a website. Um, um, I don't know. I'm, I, I think the best thing for now is to leave you my email address and we can certainly discuss things. Um, what uh, One of the things I can tell you is very honestly, I apply, I try to apply everything that I mention um, or that I learn um, in my personal life. So um, I, I, I've seen results with systems thinking and uh, 
um, uh, believing that uh, we are all companies, you know, we're all an enterprise after, um, and, and we offer very good service. We have to offer very good service because, you know, um, of course, this, this has to do with beliefs. I believe that um, we have to have an honorable, an honorable life and that we have to leave a legacy, even if it's just one person um or to one person um so definitely uh, i'll leave my email address here and we can um start new relationships um publish how can we make a better well that's big i don't know if my one my 360 uh thinking method has an answer to that you know, uh, I read recently that mathematically it's impossible for society to be better than each of the individuals that uh, form that society. So if we don't change each one individually, we cannot change society. That's why I believe so much in education. That's why I believe so much in research. That's why I believe so much in applying everything that I, um, you know, these food, uh, th these pieces of food for thought that we get. That's why I, I, I think it's worth um, testing everything uh, in our own lives. Um, but uh, you probably answered the question in, in, with, with different words, uh, but that's it. It's mathematically impossible for a society to be uh, better than the individuals that uh, are part of it. Um, let me see here. What do you think about our actual types of education developed at schools in Brazil and around the world? Everyone is going through a change because of many of the aspects I've, I've mentioned here. Um, and we're certainly, uh, the, the thing is we don't know yet. Things are happening so fast that we don't know yet. But there are some experiments uh, here, there, and everywhere that can um, not, not to be copied, but maybe to serve as food for thought for us to make changes here. Do you have plans for lecturing better uh, about the issues you promised soon for us? <laughs> well, uh, that depends on this out too, but certainly uh, one of the things I've been concentrating on is actually looking at some of tools used in systems thinking. Um, and I've been trying to apply, as I said, uh, these tools in my personal life and my professional life. Um, um, I hope it's, it, 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 it can be soon too. It has been a very uh, enjoyable a moment with all of you here and it's very enjoyable because certainly your teachers you're involved with education uh, or at least you're interested in people you're you're probably uh, people people right uh, okay that was the same great okay thank you can we have this video in our email? Um, I guess Dizao is recording, as I can see, the uh, there's an icon here for me, and it's, uh, I guess it's being recorded. Maybe you can um, talk to Dizao and um, uh, see how you can access the video. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, the best, <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, you know why it's probably the best? It's because of you. And it's because you are thinking about um, uh, change. Thanks for answering and giving me good hopes. Okay. Thanks, okay, sorry. I guess that was it. Um, now, um, um, let me see here. This is my personal email, uh, email address. And um, maybe we can, as I said, start a very long and fruitful uh, conversation 
um, through technology. Can you see it? Yeah, did I do it right? Um, all right. Well, um, I guess I was able to cover it in one hour. Uh, I'm sure that, um, well, I'm not sure, but I hope um, you can um, have several takeaways from this. As I said, none of these are my ideas. I've connected them from different parts, um, um, but this is this is what we have to do: connectivity, in many ways. That's what we're doing now through technology, and that's what we have to do here in our heads: uh, connect things. In fact, intelligence comes from Latin, and it means interleggere. Um, interleggere is to read between, between things, you know. Um, when, uh, when you see a seed and then after a few months you see a plant, you read, you're intelligent because you, you saw the cause and you saw the effect. You read between cause and effect, which does not usually happen, at least we believe, to other animals on the planet, right? That's why we say that we are intelligent. But that's the point. Sometimes we just have instruction. Instruction is about objects. Education is about people. Uh, and uh, intelligence has to do with education, not instruction. Ah, thank you for the comment, Katya. Um, well, I, I, I lived in Sao Paulo a long period of my life. Now I'm in Paraná, um, but I have relatives in Sao Paulo. It would be very nice uh, not to work necessarily with, um, you know, um, any state um, office or, or department, but to work with people like you. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Hope to get messages from you. Um, and um, as I said, the real hope I have is um, start thinking about change now until or before um, you, um, you have the elephant in the room and you don't know what to do with it. Let's all hope that systems thinking will probably bring us more butterflies than elephants. Thank you.